Hi, this is Kenny Xue speaking. Uh, in this uh, section, we're talking about the energy density. The density we're talking about is for fuel only. The energy density um, is quite important for the portable application or for the transportation or mobile application because uh, you want have less fuel to occupy the space or the weight for the power system. And the fuel cell did have some advantage over other kind of battery because the energy density ideally is much higher than conventional battery. But in reality, it still has some technical um, uh, barrier had to be overcome. Um, over here, the energy we are talking about is the electric energy rather than chemical energy we talking about previously. The energy, electric energy is mean the watt hour equal to the cell voltage times the current and the time the discharge time. The cell voltage is in volt, the unit, and the current is ampere and the discharge time is hour. The volt times amp gives the volt watt. Over here, there's a two quantity where we are keying is um, capacity and then the energy. The capacity is mean how much charge uh, flows through. Is a give the unit is m hour, and the energy is watt hour the unit. We we can see some unit conversion. One m, one m equal to the uh, one coolant flow through per second. That's mean one m. And the one m hour is uh, equal to one coulomb per second times one hour. In order to cancel out the hour and the second, uh, the, the conversion factor, uh, 3600 second uh, per hour. So you multiply by this, the one m hour, the charge equal to 3600 3, coulombs. And this is the capacity. And for the uh, energy, the, if uh, we assume the cell, uh, the fuel cell, uh, output uh, one volt, in that case, uh, one volt times the coolant give uh, a joule the the unit. So, um, the volt times m gives a watt. So it's one watt hour equal to uh, three thousand six hundred joules. So that's a basic uh, uh, unit conversion. Then we talk about the energy density. The energy density, um, there's a two type. One is a um, volumetric, the other gravimetric uh, energy density. This means volumetric per unit liter, uh, per liter how much watt hour available, or per kilogram how much watt hour available. And usually the energy density uh, in this section we are talking about is for the fuel only. But uh, sometimes uh, different literature or uh, publication or on the website you will see the energy density may mean different things. Uh, for instance, maybe the uh, actually the most uh, uh, practical would be the entire power system. That means not only count the fuel itself, but also it had a, taking account the fuel cell and the balance of plan like a um, a current the converter, inverter, and a blower, and other heat changer, cooler, all this together, entire fuel cell power system, the volume or the weight should you take into account. But in this ideal case, we're only talking about the fuel itself. Um, for the fuel cell, uh, it's uh, different than the uh, other like a power company or the Petrol company, they are talking about the, the energy density. They are talking about the is a chemical energy, the change of enthalpy. But in the fuel cell, the energy density we're talking about is a total electric energy. So in we use delta G. How much the maximum work can be done from the fuel cell is delta G rather than the delta H. And in previous section we be mentioned delta H equal 
delta g equal to delta h minus t delta c s. So you can uh, do the conversion over that way. But over here, they had to remind you uh, two things. Um, first, is a uh, um, in a few cell we, we are talking about the total electric energy output from the fuel cell rather than the chemical energy. Uh, it might be including the heat. The second, the per volume or per weight over here we're talking about is uh, uh, fuel only. But uh, many many cases should be including the uh, in taking into account the entire fuel cell system rather than uh, the fuel itself. So over here, uh, I compare with a different type of fuel and uh, they are delta G uh, calculated based on previous sec section we uh, mentioned about. If we divide by their molecular weight here, for instance, hydrogen, uh, one more equal to two gram, but over here I use a kilo more, so it's a kilo uh, gram here. And uh, so you end with the uh, uh, energy density, uh, in the joule, megajoule per kilogram here. And I convert the joule into, <laughs> into the kilowatt hour. So if, if from this point, uh, you can see uh, over here I compared hydrogen, methane, methanol, and um, <coughs> and the octant. Um, over here, I use this one as a reference, like a gasoline, but uh, it's a part of the composition of the gasoline, but just for reference, it's not the uh, gasoline itself. And uh, you can see uh, for the hydrogen, uh, the energy density is pretty high, you can see per kilogram of uh, kilowatt. So that's why the Toyota, the, the mirror, the vehicle, they be able to travel, deliver a travel about 400 kilometers, uh, use about 5 kilogram of the hydrogen. So in terms of weight, gravimetric energy density, the hydrogen is pretty promising and uh, very attractive. But uh, how, what a difference or difficulty for that? The problem is the volumetric energy density. Because hydrogen is a gas phase, so you had to store in very high pressure, even the mass itself. So we had to use um, um, pressurized tank to increase its uh, volumetric energy density. What otherwise is kind of hard to uh, store or transport. So this is a volumetric energy density based on the same principle. We can calculate the same field over here. Um, we divided by is uh, energy density uh, lit, lit uh, kilogram per liter. Over here, I assume all this is ideal ca ideal gas, and there is a one atmosphere, uh, 25 Celsius degree. In that case, you can calculate the, the energy density for hydrogen or methane. And this one, you can from the table or the website, you can check, find out the, the density. So you calculate, you can see uh, this the the gas phase fuel, like a methane or hydrogen, is very low at the ambient pressure. So in order to increase the volumetric energy density of hydrogen, it had to be pressurized. Um, for the, the pressurized gas, as I assume the as the ideal case, PV equal to NRT. And then you can calculate the density of the gas at the different pressure. Actually, uh, I list over here the different pressure and then the density, and then you can you can see the hydrogen uh, at the 350 bar or 700 uh, bar. The anything get getting reasonable to uh, one kilowatt hour per liter or two kilowatt per hour. That's getting close to practical application. But over here, this calculation just simplified because I assume it's an ideal case, but at a higher uh, pressure, actually this should be a correct collection factor, compressibility factor Z. Uh, over here I simplify, so I didn't uh, take that into account. But this one just give an uh, idea uh, how much pressure uh, had to be applied to get a, a practical application for volumetric uh, energy density of, of hydrogen. Uh, 
Um, so over here I give an exercise and uh, you can from the previous uh, sector we've been mentioned uh, how to uh, balance the electrochemical reaction overall and to write down the overall uh, reaction for the methanol, methanol fuel cell, direct methanol fuel cell the ration, this is a total ration, can you balance that? And then from the table over here, I I find all the thermodynamic property and the molecular weight and the density of methanol. Can you calculate the gravimetric energy density of methanol and the volumetric energy density? Okay, now you can see you can balance the the methanol, direct methanol fuel cell, the overall reaction. From here, you can substitute all the thermodynamic property, the free energy for each species, and then you can calculate total overall reaction. The, this is the energy, uh, free energy change. From the free energy change, you can calculate the energy density uh, for the methanol. So the energy density for the methanol, um, you can uh, this is a molecule weight, so you, you substitute that into so you can see this is the methanol um, energy density, uh, gravimetric energy density, and the volumetric energy density. You also can be calculated from here. And over here, the, um, I use a, ki a gram per milliliter, so uh, you multiply by a thousand so this become a kilogram per liter you can do the calculation over here so that's why um, you can see there's a uh, energy density uh, in terms of gravimetric or volumetric energy density pretty high for the methanol um, in the ambient temperature and the pressure and that's why the methanol is a, a good choice for the portable application because they had reasonable high energy density so over here we talk about the energy density of the fuel. The next we're going to talk about is uh, uh, based on thermodynamic uh, principle, you can calculate the ideal case what the cell voltage of a fuel cell.